bringing each and every Mighty Universe and Mighty Nerdy, and it's been almost six or five months since I have talked about the classic Dynamic Duo. And don't worry, I will review the 1966 movie after this. But before I get into the review, I have to talk about what happened during the process of Batman. See, Batman 66 was a series that first started airing in 1966, only lasting from 1966 to 1967, only one year in success in Highland. But why is that? In the first season, there were 35 episodes that were basically made. The series became so famous and so pop culture referenced that it would become, that it would only be fair for it to have a blockbuster movie. Which again, I'll probably review in March. And then there came the successful season 2, which had a whopping 60 episodes. With a lot of tying, new villains, and, and everything else. But then there came season 3. Which, as I would tell you, that season 3 is where things not only started to get worse for the dynamic duo, it also started to bring out the more campier side of the series that people are related to this. That people most be holy to this side of Batman. But there is one awesome introduction that the series ended up doing. Inviting Batgirl into the picture. So, is season 3 the worst season of the bunch? Or was there going to be more that ended up happening being cancelled? Because of how disappointing that season 3 was. Well, I'm here to say that we're going to find out. Let's head back to Gotham City, let's hit the Batmobile, and let's enter the red phone and <clears throat> await the word of the commissioner. Because I'm getting into Batman Season 3, which you guys have really, have really wanted. And also, just to let you guys know, if you want to be involved on polls so you can help vote for whatever that you want to see me review next, be sure to subscribe to, to subscribe here and just be, you know, patient until I ever put up another poll. Even though they probably won't happen as often, I promise you this, that I will probably do one at least once or twice a month. I'm going to try to do that anyways, because it is fun to get you guys involved. So, enough screwing around. Let's grab our batarangs, let's hit the Batmobile, and let's answer that red phone. This is Batman 66, Season 3. One thing to make note of when it comes to this series is that the series mostly has a progressive plot, no longer relying on two episodes, but instead of just one. But as I said, this series introduced Barbara Gordon, played by the legendary, and no, unfortunately, sadly, no longer with us, Yvonne Craig. Hi, I'm looking forward to seeing our host, millionaire Bruce Wayne. Well, he's going to get quite a surprise tonight. He hasn't seen you since you went away to college four years ago. If I had to guess what happened, I would guess that the series was seeing a more and more and lower budget and decided to bring on Yvonne Craig to try and help things pick up. As I love Yvonne Craig Batgirl outfit, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to say that this is a very absolutely astonishing outfit for Batgirl to have. Although an obscured color clash, purple, black, and yellow, it is a very well done costume and it still holds up to this day as a lot of people's favorites, and hell, I'm even willing to admit that it's one of my favorites, but Yvonne Craig Batgirl is not only just infamous for starting in this series and trying to get the series going forward, in fact, Yvonne Craig Batgirl introduction was so famous that even that the animated series kind of copied and redesigned Yvonne Craig's Batgirl outfit. That is how popular that Yvonne Craig's Batgirl and her famous introduction was to have this awesome legacy passed down to someone else. I'll talk more about that when it comes to the animated series, when it comes back into play, and also when I review the animated series eventually here for my YouTube channel, since it is one that people want me to see, and I promise that if not this month, it'll be in March when I review it. Now, to be fair with this, though, it does make sense that for an awesome legacy to be passed down to someone else, and Melissa Joan Hart was a great exception to that role. But Yvonne Craig was infamous in the role. However, while she is infamous in the role, there was some controversy behind the scenes, especially with her co-host, Burt Ward. Yeah, there was kind- before they became best friends, Burt Ward and Yvonne Craig didn't exactly see eye to eye. 
mostly Burt Ward, was upset at Yvonne Craig, but for his own reasons. While Burt eventually became a friend of Yvonne Craig's, at first he was upset with Yvonne Craig because he thought Yvonne was eventually going to replace him and be Batman's sidekick and take fame from him. However, Burt and Yvonne eventually saw eye to eye, and no longer were they against enemies, but later would become the best of friends and the best of allies. If you remember back when I talked about Season 1 and Season 2, Burt Ward was afraid that he was going to be replaced because he, they were afraid, or executives were afraid, of him getting taller. Thankfully, that was not the case with the Boy Wonder as he was still a short size. Enough so that he was able to still fit the role until the final season. Batman Season 3, like I said, had a very surprise that of, ver of having very little two-parters. In fact, they only have one three-parter and, as far as I know, one two-parter that only happens in this series. Gone were the days of stay tuned until next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. It was long past gone. For whatever reason, no one really can... F I bet that no one really nowadays could find out without information. But I didn't research it, so if I had to guess, it was that money was falling apart at Fox, and unfortunately, they could no longer keep production up with Batman the series. Which is why the final episode of Batman the 66 series really doesn't feel like a complete and odd, an utter ending. In fact, it feels like you go, you're driving a car, and you just suddenly slammed into a brick wall. Because that is how big of a stop that this is. And this series has some returning villains like Frank Gorshin as the Riddler, Cesar Romero as the Joker, and Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. But this also is, a se is the season where they brought in a lot of questionable decisions for villains. Some of them became infamous. Or some of them became famous, and some of them not so much. So, we have to talk about some of the villains that, ha that are highlighted in this series, and only some, and including one very, very, really obscure decision choice for Catwoman. Yes, I will have to kind of explain what eventually happened here and why they didn't decide to go with me, Merryweather, and went with someone else. If you already know who it is, don't spoil it for nobody, either in the live chat, or when it premieres, or in the comments. Just let it happen. But for right now, let's talk, because the hero didn't change, except for the inclusion of Yvonne Craig, let's talk about the new Gotham City villains. And uh, these ones are extremely weird. Some... Iconic, some extremely weird. So, let's break down the latter category. Let's talk about the new villains of Batman 66. First one to talk about is the Siren, played by the legendary Joan Collins. As the Siren is a supervillain that uses high-pitched siren noises to hypnotize people. My possession are the unstoppable. Then there's the obscure Louis the Lilac. Yes, that is completely his name. Played by the legendary Milton Burrow in a very hilarious role. Some of the young people of the flower generation will be the future leaders of the country, Arbutus. And when I have them within my flower power and control their minds, Gotham City. The legendary Vincent Price returns as the legendary Egghead, but he's not alone as he has a henchwoman, who is named Olga, played by the legendary Ambactor. Blossom of our organic kind, symbol of Azarovian power, at last is coming to right to possess her. Quick, Then there's Lord and Lady Vlog, played by Rudy Valley and Gunnish Johns, respectively. And if you know me, I love Gunnish John from Mary Poppins. I'm glad to see your gut is better, Lord Fogg. I got that! <laughs> it always improves with the change of weather. Well, I'll have a chance to meet the rest of the faculty anyway. Yep. Winifred Banks was in Batman 66. 
if you do not respect this woman now, you need to ASAP. She was in Batman, and that makes her ten times more awesome. And then there's the weirdest choice of the latter. Catwoman, played by the legendary actress, Eartha Kitt. Best of the Gravia. I managed to purloin this picture of it today at the Couturier's luncheon. <laughs> when no one was looking. I do love Eartha Kitt as much as the next guy or girl, but when you see Catwoman, played by the legendary and beautiful Joey Numa, and then you see her played by the famous Lee Merriweather, and then you see Eartha Kitt, there is a big difference in between the three. But there is honestly a good reason as to what happened. And as you would imagine, it has to do with the two actresses being more busy and tied up because of their schedules, and especially for how famous that the two were. While Lee Merriweather was infamous in the Batman 66 movie, she would not reappear in the series, sadly, because she was a very famous actress and could not make another cameo. And as I'm pretty sure Julie would love to reappear in the role as Catwoman, unfortunately, she was too busy as an actress and also a model to be seen in Batman again. But as funny as it is, Joey Numa would not return to the Batman 66 universe until 2016 with the animated movie Return of the Cape Crusaders, which made him more famous. And if this doesn't prove I'm the biggest bat dork on the planet Earth, then I don't know what does. While I do love Joey Numa and the terrific woman had celebrated 99, 99, her 99th birthday, but she still somehow looks absolutely as stunning as she did back in 1966, and can still pull off the Catwoman outfit. Who'd have thunk? <clears throat> so in case you're wondering, yes, I do love Julie Numa. She is still my favorite Catwoman. By far. <clears throat> it, it, it might have to confuse young viewers, or just viewers of Batman at the time, with being like, oh boy, Catwoman's in this way. Eartha Cat is Catwoman? What? I can probably understand that the production value was like, we can't find anyone out to replace Catwoman, and basically I would assume that Eartha Kitt was the person that said yes to the role. So, make your own suggestion to what happened in the comments down below. Unless you're gonna do your research and then let me know what happened. But if I had to guess, because Lee Merriweather and Joey Numa both were busy doing other roles, because both were successful actresses at the time, yeah, that would probably be it. They were both weren't available, and probably Fox tried to hire somebody else to play them, and it didn't go well. But there's even more weirder villains of the Batman 66 verse that we haven't covered yet. Like I said, Frank Gorsh and Edward were returned. Burgess Meredith as Penguin returned, and Cesar Romero as the Joker returned. And then there's the opposite ladder of the category. Oh dear oh my, oh dearie me, is there the opposite ladder of the category? Because Batman 66 had a woman's rights activist in the series. I'm really trying to not upset a, a raging storm in the comments, and if that happens, I will disable comments into this video, but this just did happen. There is technically a Karen in Batman. Why? As in this series, there is a very weird villain. The Nora Clavicle of a woman's rights activist Played by the legendary Barbara Rush. Much more. As soon as night falls, I'm planning to destroy all of Gotham City. All of Gotham City? Did a Dr. Cassandra and her husband, <coughs> Kabbalah, played by the legendary <coughs> Israel Lupino and Howard Duff. <laughs> And the final villain of Batman 66 Universe is Minerva, 
played by the legendary and iconically can't mistaken her, Jaja Gabor. Completely pressurized. There's nothing left of the little darling. Well, then let's take off with her loot. Not until my dear friend Lord Easy Street. And just for you, as you can imagine, after 26 episodes, Batman 66 officially ends. And no more Batman would be seen. It's a sham shame to happen to a series like this, that going from an excellent first season to a phenomenal second season into a very lackluster third season, which is unfortunate to happen with TV shows that don't exist, even still nowadays, where they're likely to have a successful season, maybe another successful season, before eventually being cancelled. This is just the case with a lot of famous TV shows. And so much so that there are a few that can be mentioned. Symbionic Titan, Generator Rex, and even a long, obscure, and forgotten superhero series that used to exist known only as The Cowl. If anybody can remember that series, good for you. If not, I'm a fucking dork. It even ha but hey, it lasted longer than a remake of Knight Rider. How many people remember the remake of Knight Rider that happened in like two in the, the late two thousands? Like I think it was like two thousand eight when it happened. Only had like three or four episodes, and then it was canceled. Good times, but Batman wouldn't be seen again until basically thirty three years from nineteen sixty six, with the fun or twenty twenty two years. Would it be 20, 23 years? 23 years, I had to do math in my head, and I'm not good at that. Until 1989, with the phenomenal Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, and Jack Nicholson Batman movie, which spawned off the sequel of Batman Returns, and then in 1991, Batman saw a resurgence in popularity, even more so with Batman the Animated Series. So if it wasn't for this small little series, Batman would probably have been a heavy obscure. And, and as well as Adam West, Julie Newmer, and as well as Burt Ward and several of the other cast, would have been lost and forgotten. Even more so that Adam West was so famous as Batman that he would reappear in Batman the Animated Series in the episode <clears throat> Beware the Grey Ghost, which is a phenomenal episode that I will talk about when I review the series. So Batman 66 has come and gone, my friends, but we are not done with the Cape Crusader and the Diamond Duo just yet. But I have to say that as a total, Batman 66 is a phenomenal series, with a great first season, a spectacular second season, and a in-between third season, Batman 66 is one of the best seasons that you could ever see. So, if you're into some nostalgia, and if you want to watch a different version of Batman, I highly recommend my second favorite Batman right next to Kevin Conroy, as Adam West will always and forever be my favorite Batman. Long live Batman 66, and... And long lived the successful series. And after so much time, and I apologize for that, I am finally done with Batman 66. So if you're interested in checking out this series, I highly recommend that you do so. Even picking up the DVD series, which is a great suggestion. As it comes jam pat, and all you have to do is pay one phenomenal price. When I got mine, mine was like 60 or $50, which is still a good price, because you get a lot of merchandise involved. <clears throat> But still, Batman 66 lives on forever in a bottle of Batmania fans. So, have yourself a little, have yourself a treat, go down to the Batcave, and assist yourself by turning on the atomic batteries and turbines to speed, and check out Batman 66. Wouldn't be surprised if the entire comment section on this video is You better review Batman the Animated Series. Just people sharpening their, their nails so they can scratch into my face going, We're waiting. And I promise I will get to it in March. If I forget, then you have every right to basically spam me in the comments and say, Where is Batman TAS review? Where is Batman the Animated Series review? Where is your review of Batman the Animated Series? So I promise it will be in March. Although I'm going to take a break from the nostalgia and go back to movies for a short time being, as I... <clears throat> As there are a few movies that I still want to review that still sit back here. And that was why it took me so long to get back to something of nostalgia. 
because there's still some stuff that I still want to try and cover on this channel. I think the only thing of nostalgia that I have covered in January was just JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and as well as DC's <clears throat> DC's Legend of Tomorrow. That's it. And everybody was, was happy that I reviewed Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, but that's it. So, I'm still gonna jump back on this on the nostalgia bandwagon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at, at Twitter with at Twitter with the link in the description down below. And do me a favor if you want me to do it. But next month I will check out Batman the movie. Please let me know if you are interested in me making a top ten favorite Batman sixty six episode list. I will be happy to do so. It might take me some time because I might have to rewatch the entire series again to kind of pick my top ten episodes. But just bear with me if it does take me a little bit of time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I believe the universe. I brought nerdy. Keep geeking on. And until next time, guys. Take care.